morning we bring you greetings from the St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church located at 409 Holloman Drive in College Station, Texas. Amen. Greetings from our pastor, Dr. M.O. Cooper, and the entire St. Matthew family. Amen. Amen. We say good morning. God bless you. Amen. Amen. It's just another gift that God has given. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. That allow us Thank to God. take part in yet another day. Amen. Amen. It is a wonderful blessing uh, to be yet in the land of the living. Amen. But while we're here, we have a responsibility. Amen. Not only to live, but we just learned from our Sunday school that in our living, there ought to be some giving. Amen. Amen. We're not here to be on the sideline. We ought to participate. Amen. In this program that God has given us. We again, we bring you greetings from uh, the St. Matthew Church, as we begin our uh, 11 a.m. worship service, we invite you to come along and join in with us as we lift up the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So we're going to uh, give you into the hands of our music ministry, Dr. Williams, and, and uh, we'll hear some Zion songs, and then we'll come back. We'll have a, a scripture and prayer, and then we will hear uh, from our pastor. Amen, amen. 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 God bless you.
just before uh, Reverend Osgood comes to give us our scripture, I want to remind St. Matthew that our uh, uh, Sunday school books for the new quarter will be available here at the church on Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. and on Saturday from 10 a.m. Uh, from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m. Amen. So if you need a new Sunday school book, amen, they'll be available. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, our scripture comes to us today from the 100 number of Psalms. It's a familiar one, and I think it's a timely one. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his gates with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his tr truth endure through all generations. I just read to you Psalms 100. May God have blessing on the readers and the doers of his holy word. Amen. bow for a moment of prayer. Amen. Amen. And we come this morning and dear God with our heads bowed down towards the mother earth. Amen. But in our hearts we lift up toward heaven. We come before you today God as your humble servants. Recognizing and acknowledging that thou art God and beside you there is none other. We come God with gratefulness and thanksgiving in our hearts for we recognize that you have been so good and so wonderful and so kind unto us we come this morning God in recognition that uh, you are God all by yourself amen and in you we have all of our help and our hope lies in you amen we, we come God and as we enter into this season of recognition of your word. Amen. Uh, there are those that would argue that we don't know exactly when you came, but uh, I don't know that that really matters. Amen. We pause at this moment. Amen. To say thank you whenever you came. I'm glad you came. Amen. Amen. We, we, we bring glory to your name, God. For we recognize that you have been so wonderful, so good, and that your purpose for coming and dying was that so that we might live. So we're grateful today, God. We ask, dear Father, that you would continue to look out among those upon this planet, recognizing, God, that we are living in perilous times. But, God, we know that our help and our hope comes from you. Hey, amen. We, we, we know your name, and we pray that you know ours. Yes, hey, amen. So as we enter into this season, calls us to be reflective, amen, to think about uh, what you have already done. I know this is the season of giving, but we have already received so much. Right. Amen, amen, amen. And, and the, the gifts that matter didn't come from Amazon. Oh, Lord. Can't find it at Best Buy. Hey, amen. We said in your word that if we look toward the hills, from which cometh all of our help, for our help comes. We thank you, God. We pray for all of those that are read this morning, those that are, are, are going through the, the loss of a loved one. We ask, God, that you would bring comfort. Remind them that you are a God uh, that never makes a mistake. And then, God, we pray for those that are sick, uh, that have pain in their body, that are suffering, uh, whether it be physical pain or mental anguish or whatever it is that we may be going through we know God that you are the answer so we let all at your feet we thank you God for those that are present in this place and for those that are listening via the live stream we we just we just say thank you we we collectively lift up our hands toward heaven amen give you grace honor and praise then oh God we pray for the man of God that you have set before us that you have placed in this place, uh, that you have given the anointing that will bring us.
us your word. We ask God that you will touch his heart and his spirit. Allow him access to the treasures of your storehouse. Amen. That he might preach and teach your word. Amen. That uncompromised gospel in a way that would cause men, women, boys, and girls. Amen. To come asking what must I also do that I might be saved. So, Father, we, we pray that as we prepare to hear from heaven, that you prepare our hearts that we might not only receive, but we might take that, what you have prepared for us, that it might be useful in the upgoing and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Amen. Once again, God, we give you praise, honor, and glory. We say thank you. Amen. For all that you have done and all that you are about to do. Amen. We're thankful for those of us that know God have not been dependent on a stimulus from Washington. Amen. For the stimulus falls down from heaven each and every day. We thank you, God, for your blessings. Keep your arms around our children. Amen. Help us to teach them. Amen. What it is they need to know that they might learn to honor and praise thee. And then, Father, we pray that when we've done all that you've given us to do on this side, when our time on earth is done and we must stand before you in the judgment, we pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, that we'll hear you say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. That you will swing open the gates of heaven that we might be allowed to enter. Join in that heavenly choir that's already in progress, singing holy, holy, holy to your precious name. These things, God, we do ask in the awesome name of your darling son, Jesus, the Christ of God. In his name we do pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Amen.
some folk would rather yes, sir. have <laughs> silver and gold. Some people would rather have riches yes, sir. untold. But just give me Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'd rather have Jesus yes, sir. Yes, than Lord. silver and gold. Good morning, good morning. To everybody that is listening and present and alive and blessed and know you're blessed. This is a wonderful day. And this is another worship opportunity that we come to the Lord's house almost at the close of the year. It's been a different type of year. But God has kept us. God is still blessing us. And he's not through with us Amen. or the circumstance that we're in yet. Amen. I love you. I praise God for you. I pray that you are in the mind to know that there is none other than Jesus Amen. who is able to save the sin sick soul. There is a, is a passage today found in Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, uh, chapter number one, 1 Corinthians chapter one, and I will read in your hearing today uh, that you will be able to understand just how blessed we are. Amen. Two verses, three verses, 29 through 31. And you find these words there, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who, God, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption mm -hmm. that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord I want to talk about this subject today for a little while God gave us Jesus that we might be made right in his sight. Amen. God gave us Jesus yes, sir. Yes, sir. that we might be made right in his sight. My brothers and sisters, God is love. There were two reasons why Jesus, when he had come and when he had began to carry out the ministry that God sent him to carry out, he had to be sure that the way he had deliberately on purpose chosen was the right way. It was inevitable that Caesarea Philippi should be followed by the Mount of Transfiguration. At Caesarea Philippi, Jesus put himself to the test of human recognition. He wanted to know if there was anybody that knew him for who he was. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, he put himself to the test of divine approval. Yes, it was necessary that he should find out if there was someone who knew him and recognized him not only for who he was, but for what he was. Mm -hmm. But it was more important, my brothers and sisters, that he would be certain that the course on which he had embarked was in accordance with the will of God. We ought to be mindful mm -hmm. that whatever we do in the name of the Lord, right. 
should be in the will All right. okay. of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I said, can I say that again? We ought to be mindful Amen. that whatever we do in the name Amen. of the Lord right. should be in the will of the Lord. Amen. The two reasons I say that Jesus had to be certain that he was traveling in the right way, in the right direction. First, first reason is this, that uh, this way would end in his death. This way would end in his death. He had to be certain that his death was the only way that we could live and not die into eternal damnation. Can I get a witness? Yes, the second reason is that the way he was traveling was a flat out contradiction of all accepted Jewish messianic hopes, dreams, and expectations. In other words, he was traveling against the flow of the river. Amen? He had to understand who he was. He had to be certain that the way he was traveling was the way God wanted him to travel because men would not understand. Amen. <laughs> and what men don't understand, they normally won't receive. All right. <laughs> Are y'all going to pray with me? Right. So, so here is what Jesus did, he looked to God. On the mount, scripture says God's approval was magnified. He says that while he was there on the mount, there were two there who had already passed and gone. Moses and Elijah. They were there as witnesses along with Peter, James, and John. The Bible says that there was a voice that came down from heaven. The Bible says that there was the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove that came down and lit on Jesus, and his countenance changed. Right. I, I wish I, the way he looked, the way he appeared, changed altogether. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. When God is with you, something about you yeah, yeah. will have to change. Uh, yes, we cannot stay in the place we were in, we cannot do the things that we had done and be pleasing in his sight. There must be a change. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there. So Jesus, Jesus, if Jesus had to be sure, what about us? My Lord, my Lord. He sought God because he knew that if God was pleased, the criticism and opposition of men was nothing. He knew that if God was pleased, that God would be able through him to do the work that he sent him to do. Sin had made men and women the enemies of God. Oh, oh, can I get a witness? Sin had made men and women the enemies of of God, but but this is what I like about God. The Bible says uh, it pleased God. Yeah. It pleased God that He would send His Son, and that His Son would die for us. Now, 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 verse twenty-six says, "For ye see, I love this. <laughs> For you see, your calling, brethren." How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Uh -huh. 
I need somebody that I can use. I need somebody who can accept being taught and trained and sent forth into situations that are not really all that comfortable. So he says in verse 26, and then he goes on in verse 27 and said, but God. I love that about God. But, but, but God. But, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God, God, God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Things that seem to be nothing to bring down to nothing. Things that are. Then he says that no flesh should glory All right. in his presence. All right. I'll use the lowly, the weak, the despised, those that the world chooses to call nothing in order that when my will is done, when my son has completed his task to bring sinners to salvation, no man can take credit, no man should glory in God's presence, but every man ought to lift up holy hands and say, Lord, I certainly do thank you. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Why did God send Jesus? Because damnation can only be undone by salvation. Oh, I wish I had a witness. I said damnation can only be undone by salvation. Man could not do what needed to be done. Man cannot do what must be done. Man cannot by his wisdom solve the problems of the world. Man failed in his innocence. Man failed in his conscience. He failed in his ability to distinguish and to choose to do the good rather than the evil. It only took a piece of fruit to undo the great gift that God had given man. It only took a piece of fruit to evict man from paradise. It only took a piece of fruit to set gods outside paradise so man could not get back in. Only salvation can undo damnation. So he says, We failed in choosing good over evil. And must I, can I please tell you that humanism will never solve the problems of this world. Human wisdom will never solve the issues that we are dealing with right now. Think about it. One year almost. We've been dealing with something that is dealing with us in a way that we have never been dealt with before. We've got a question mark, and we're finally getting to the point to where we can see something on the horizon that will cause us to be able to turn this thing around. Should not have taken us this long even though they say it's a miracle that it happened this quick, that we've come up with vaccine that would undo the death sentence that this virus is causing in the world. 
But can I tell you that even though we are hurting, even though we are losing our loved ones, even though uh, we are confused in our minds, even though we are living with rampant hate in the world, yeah, yeah. hate won't fix where you hurt. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Yes, you can walk around all you want to yes, full of hate, but it won't fix where you hurt it. It won't ease the pain that's dealing with your body, your heart, and your mind. Humanism will never help us outdo what evil has done. So one saint, the church where I grew up, used to say, let go and let God. In other words, her instruction to us was get your hand off of it All right. and trust God yes, sir. Yes. and he'll fix it. Yes. If my people yes, which are called by my name Thank you, shall humble themselves and pray yeah, 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 yeah. and seek my faith yes, and turn from their wicked way yes, then Amen. will I hear from heaven Amen. and will forgive their sin my, 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 my. and heal the land oh, there's an order yes, sir. forgive yeah. I wish I had somebody after man turns God will forgive Amen. And, and will forgive Sin, sin is the issue mm -hmm. that caused us to be lost. Mm -hmm. But salvation is the power that will bring us back into right relationship with God. Three things, and I'm going to hurry up and go to my seat. How do you let go and let God? First of all, you have to understand this word salvation. Right. Salvation. Verse 25, but we preach Christ. Wait, not money, not fame, not fortune, not our degrees, our education. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But I like the next verse, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Verse 25, I love it. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. What is salvation? Salvation is divine favor. Anybody here know you're living under the favor of God? That, that, that's why things that are naturally against you, God can turn out to work for you. God is an awesome God. He says, he says when you get Jesus, who I've sent, you will be able to withstand all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yeah. What is salvation? Salvation means that we've moved from enemies to children. All right. <laughs> I'm no longer an enemy of God, right. but I am his child. And my relationship with him has changed. And now I'm back in right standing with him. How can we do that, preacher? The Bible says without shedding of blood. There's no remission for sin. I'm almost through. Salvation is divine favor. No matter how bad you've been, no matter how much you've messed up and failed, if you will receive Jesus, God will cause you to be back into right standing with him by the blood of Jesus Christ. Number two, sanctification. 
What is sanctification? Sanctification is transformation mm, through divine intervention. Transformation through divine intervention. He said, be not conformed yes, to this world, yes. but be ye transformed yes, by the renewing of your mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> mm, yeah. You may know what is that good. Perfect will of God. Transformation through divine intervention. What do you mean, preacher? Truth and grace and Jesus equal life. And not just life, but <laughs> life abundantly, life everlasting. Truth and grace and the law equal death. Because there's nothing about the law that could save us from our sin. The law was not our savior. The law was our schoolmaster to show us how sinful that we had become. Isn't God good? The last thing I want to tell you is uh, that when you are sanctified and, and when you are saved, uh, you become a servant. I know Jesus said you're no longer servant, but now I call you friend. But we serve God through the infusion of divine ability. In other words, you can't do what you do if it's just you. Wait. Wait, I said, you can't do what you do if it's just you. So what he does is he gives us divine ability. He empowers us to do his holy and divine will. One writer said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yet not I, the life that I now live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm not what I'm going to be. But bless God, I'm not what I used to be. Glory. Hallelujah. When I'm sick in my body, nothing is too hard for my healer. Glory. Hallelujah. When it seems that everything is going wrong in my life, that small, still voice speaks to me and speaks to you as a believer and says, I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I'm glad God said Jesus because Melvin needed salvation. I thought it was all right. I thought I was on my way where I was trying to go, but my ticket said hell. I wish I had somebody. Is there anybody here thought you were going in the right direction? until the Lord uncovered your sinful way to you, and then you realized that you had a one-way ticket to a place called hell. And there's no two-way, there's no round-trip ticket to hell. Uh, there, there's only one way. Once I'm there, I'll never come out. The only one that ever went into hell and came back out was Jesus. That's why God sent it. Because then not only could he write my standing, not only could he give me peace in my mind, not only could he put joy in my heart, but he went down to hell in my place yeah. after he occupied a bar of tomb yeah. in my place. He went down into the devil's domain and dealt with him. The Bible says he took away the keys of death and the grave from the devil. He gave gifts unto men. He led captivity captive. I wish I had somebody. His body was in the grave, but he was in hell dealing with damnation. And then early Sunday morning, that third day morning, the Bible says, according to the promise of God, he stepped out on resurrection ground with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. 
I wish I had somebody. And he said, he that believeth on me shall never be ashamed. I don't know about you. I know there's a way of worship that's been developed over the last few years that doesn't have much power, doesn't have much spirit, doesn't have much humility, but I give me Jesus. When I think about Jesus, my hands want to move. When I think about Jesus, I get joy welling up on the inside. When I think about Jesus, I can't help but say glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He laid in that grave bodily, but he went to hell and went to work spiritually. And early Sunday morning, he got up out of that grave with all power in his hand. And then 40 days later, after he showed himself to be alive and allowed the doubter to put his finger in the wound in his hand and in the wound in his side, he ascended on high. Hallelujah. After he paid my sin debt, paid it totally, paid it finally, he went back to heaven, sat down beside his father, and there he pleads our case day after day. Anybody here know you can't get to heaven by yourself? Is there anybody here who knows that God has made a way and his name is Jesus? Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. He's God all by himself. And he has done all that is needful in order that the lost might be saved and that the damned might be redeemed. Bless his holy name. God gave us Jesus so that we could have right standing with him. What a mighty God. We serve, somebody said once, St. Matthew Church is heavy on grace. Yes. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is that thing that we can't get on our own. Grace is higher than our arm could reach. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Glory, hallelujah. In the midst of a pandemic, if you get Jesus, he'll make everything all right. In the midst of a pandemic, he'll fix it so the devil can no longer steal your joy, your peace, and your power. If you get Jesus... You'll quit walking the floor at night, worrying about things that you cannot change. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll make it all right. I said turn it over to Jesus, and he'll make it all right. Glory. Hallelujah. Do you know him today? If you don't know him, you need to get to know him. Because time is not as long as it used to be. Amen. Amen. Time is not as long as it used to be. Uh, demons are rattling their sabers. <laughs> They're upset now yeah, yeah. because somebody had sense enough to choose good over evil. Amen. They're rattling their sabers because they're losing those that they thought they already had on hell's road. They're rattling their sabers because they can't understand how a bunch of folk who used to be anything but right, anything but good, could get together and pray and God will change the whole world. What a mighty God we serve. So I'm good. I'm glad that God loves me the way he loves me. I'm glad God saw me when I couldn't see myself. I'm glad God chose me when I couldn't stand myself. Oh, I wish I had. Maybe I'm the only one, but somewhere in life, most of us get to the point where we're not really happy with ourselves. And God can fix it. God can change it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless you. My prayer today is that you would have a wonderful 
wonderful Christmas celebration. Things are different. Sometimes we have to yield to things that are not really what we would choose. We're used to greeting our families on Christmas and Christmas Eve. We're, 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 we're used to the house being full and the food smelling all the way out to the car before you come in. We're used to that. We're used to that. We're used to that. And we love that. But we got to love one another more than that. Help is on the way. But we must do our part. Amen. 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 We must wear our masks. We must keep a safe distance. We must watch our health and be concerned with the health of others. I know you might not like needles, but when the vaccination comes down your street, I would advise you to take it. Because, see, all medicine don't taste good going down. <laughs> but if we can get it down, it will do what it's designed to do. My grandfather used to say it this way, and I'm going to let you go home. He said, boy, I know what it tastes like. But all I'm going to tell you is when you get it in your mouth, swallow real hard. Yeah. <laughs> swallow real hard. Get it down. And it will do what it's supposed to do. Somebody in my neighborhood, in my childhood, somebody convinced people that castor oil would cure anything. Huh? Baby girl. That's nasty. <laughs> but they gave it to us. And we took it. And we couldn't go to the hospital. We didn't have Blue Cross Blue Shield. Right. We didn't have Prudential. Right. But God gave them wisdom yes, to use things that were readily available yes, to help us get through our sickness. God is an awesome God. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. I pray that none of my babies get the mumps. But if they do, they ought to shout. Because the healing is a little different now. Amen. Treatment is a little different now. Amen. My treatment was my grandmother would take a rag and open a can of sardines. <laughs> soak the rag in the sardine juice. And roll the sardines up in the rag and tie it around my head. Yes, Not only was I sick, but I stank <laughs> because it was nasty. Yeah. But my brothers and sisters, it did yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> Got stung, get stung by walls. Walked by my grandfather with my hand on my head where I got stung. And he'd say, what's wrong with you? And I'd say, a, a wall stung me, and I'm quitting. He said, come here, boy. My grandfather dipped snuff. And he would stick his finger in his mouth and rub it wherever I had been stung. Not only was I stung, but I was stinky. But I got well. <laughs> God is an awesome God, and he's worthy to be praised. Love you. Have a wonderful Christmas. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you can't see each other personally, and that's going to be something we're going to have to be wise about. Amen. Yes, we are. Amen. The numbers are constantly going up Amen. because we are not being wise. Amen. 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 But when we do what? we're supposed to do. God is already doing what he's supposed to do. He's, he's got the vaccinations in boxes on, on trucks and on airplanes. And they're shipping out now. So when you see the needle, just 
Close your eyes. Swallow real hard. And give the healing the opportunity to take place. God bless you. Love you today. God gave us Jesus so that we could have right standing with him. God bless you today. Love you. Amen. And appreciate you. Mr. Williams, it's good to see you. Amen. Amen. Mr. Elder, it's good to see you as always. Dr. Williams, Mr. Cooper, Sister Williams, all the deacons, preachers, and members, and those who are in the booth making sure we could do this. We thank God for you. Let's, let's, let's receive our benedictory prayer. Have a wonderful Christmas. May your gift be health and healing, joy and peace. May your family be kept in God's care. Thank you for the wisdom of God, being wiser than the wisdom of man. Our gift is not under the tree, but our gift hang on the tree. Hung, bled, and died. And now he lives that we might have life eternal. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ of God, the love of God the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us now, hence, and forever. And all God's people sat together with one voice.